Hello everyone, this is meteorologist and storm chaser Gabe Garfield and tonight I'm going to be covering the surprise outbreak of tornadoes in Ohio and before I begin I really want to extend my deepest condolences to all those affected by tonight's storms. My heart is with you and I pray and hope that the recovery goes well. Now getting into this outbreak, forecasters missed this tornado threat in Ohio, including myself. So I wanted to know why. I believe there are a couple of reasons. The first reason is that there was slightly under forecasted low level shear. And we'll look into this in a minute. And I also believe that there was significantly under forecasted instability. So let's get right into it. So let's start by looking at SBC's day one outlook at 3 p.m. Central or 4 p.m. Eastern. And you can see that there's a 10% risk assessed from Southeast Oklahoma into Northern Arkansas, and a 5% extends all the way up into Western Ohio. Now the areas where the tornado outbreak happened were in a 2%. Now, if you look at this morning's HREF, which is basically an ensemble of models, a whole bunch of models with slightly different initial conditions and features, and it produced a pretty similar map to what we saw in the day one outlook. So it's not surprising that SBC went in this direction. You see a 10% and very much the same area that you saw before and a 5% up there in Indiana and Western Ohio. Uh, missing from this is the 5% in Missouri and Illinois. Now, when we look at the storm reports uh, from about 10 p.m. on 314, 10 p.m. Eastern time, you see a lot of wind reports, particularly in the southwest part of that risk area, and then, of course, the tornadoes up into western Ohio. Now, obviously, there's a distinct lack of tornado reports in the area where you had the 10 percent. So that's a pr the first question I had is, why, why was that? Why did we not see tornadoes in Arkansas? So let's look at the practically perfect forecast for wind. You can see here that if you basically took the wind reports and did an apples to apples comparison with what SBC has produced for its wind forecast, you might see this risk area emerge in northern Arkansas and southern Missouri. The basic idea that I want to point out is that there were a lot of squall line type of storms out there in northern Arkansas and into southern Missouri, which created these wind reports. So essentially when you have a squall line, it ruins tornado potential. And so I think that was a large part of why that southern risk area didn't pan out. The storm mode was just simply unfavorable for that. Now, that doesn't really answer the question of why we actually saw tornadoes where we didn't expect to see them at all, which was in western, uh, western Ohio into central Ohio. So now if you take the tornado reports and apply the same apples to apples comparison as with the wind, where you basically take the tornado reports and transform them into what the SBC uses in its day one outlook. You can see here that where the 10% was forecast as of right now, there are no tornado, tornado reports. So therefore there's no risk assessed here. And then there's a tornado report in North Texas with a 2% contour. And then of course it's glaringly obvious 10% uh, contour in Western Ohio. Um, obviously this is subject to change. This is very preliminary information. But at the moment, it does look like this was significantly under forecast, particularly uh, into Western Ohio. Now, if you look at the HREF, the ensemble that I mentioned, you can see that the ensemble is kind of capturing the ideas of pretty short updraft helicity tracks through Eastern Oklahoma and into Western Arkansas, which would kind of suggest uh, short-lived supercells, maybe embedded supercell structures, which was one of the reasons why I wasn't really keen on the potential for uh, storm chasing in this area, not to mention obviously the bad terrain. Whereas if you look to the north, you can see um, pretty good long track supercell thunderstorms hinted at by these long streaks. Um, and I pretty much ignored, honestly, the storms here in Western Ohio, because I figured they were elevated based upon the Cape uh, forecast that I'll show you here in a moment, but as you can see, that changed through the day and how that evolved. Now, from the morning run, this is from 12Z, so this is uh, 7 a.m. Central Time. You can see that storm relative velocity for the 0Z time frame was expected to be kind of in the 
100 to even up to 200 range, um, particularly over um, Ohio, where you expected to see this big max. Now, at the same time, we didn't expect to see much instability. So with the instability that was projected, really, you were going to get relatively weak low level shear. Now, in terms of dew point temperature, uh, where the outbreak happened, the dew point temperature was only expected to be in, say, the mid to upper 50s. And then the lower 60s were sort of encroaching into southwestern Ohio, but really mostly relegated to points west of Ohio. And this is for, by the way, 22Z. So this would be uh, 5 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Eastern time. And then if you go forward, you can see that the Cape was obviously relegated to these areas with moisture. So uh, Ohio and the ensemble mean from the HRF showed only a thousand to maybe less than a thousand joules per kilogram of Cape. So if you're looking at this as a storm chaser, you wouldn't be so impressed with how much uh, Cape there is here. You usually like to see at least 1500 for this type of setup, but it was actually on the, on the low side. Now, what actually happened? Now, if you look at this in terms of the SBC mesoanalysis, you can see that actually pretty good forecast for low-level shear across most of the risk area, particularly uh, as you get into Ohio, you can see uh, 200 meters squared per second squared was uh, at least the minimum of helicity that you got in that zero to one kilometer layer. It actually increased as you moved to the east. And so that was actually relatively well forecast. I will say, based upon work, what we saw with um, the mean forecast from HRF in the morning, this is actually a little bit higher than we expected, maybe by 50 meters squared per second squared. So the shear, the low level shear, which is the kind of shear that really helps tornadoes to form, that was a lot better, or not a lot better, but a little better than what was expected. Now, if you look at the moisture, I think this was the main difference. You can see here that to Western Ohio, we do see uh, that lower 60s contour at 22Z. So that's 5 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Eastern. You can see that that encroached upon Western Ohio. And I think that made all the difference because, you know, Cape is very sensitive to dew point temperature. So even if you raise the dew point temperature by a few degrees, you really increase that Cape. And you can see that here at the same time, the Cape from the mesoanalysis shows 2,000, 2,500 even, uh, coming close to Southwest Ohio. So the bottom line is where, where you saw 1,000 joules per kilogram and the mean from the ensemble, now you see over 2,000 joules per kilogram. So that's gonna make a world of difference when you have such strong low level shear and even higher than was shown in the morning. So that is all I'm going to talk about with this video, but I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on what might have been missed with this forecast. This is definitely not comprehensive. So let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe and feel free to follow me on socials. Here's where I'm available. And thank you very much. And we'll talk to you next time.